I'm about to show you an amazingly beautiful color palette that I put together all within the Sherwin-Williams color catalog. This is a palette that's directly tied to nature. And if you know me, you know I love the outdoors, anything outside, all that good stuff. And I'm really excited to show you what I've put together today because this palette is entirely derived from one of my favorite places on earth, Loch Lomond in Scotland. Scotland is a country that is near and dear to my heart for several reasons, but Loch Lomond specifically is probably my favorite loch of them all. Even though Loch Ness gets all the praise because of the monster that lives in that water, apparently, this is a color palette that will give you that essence of Scotland that I really, really do appreciate. So let's get into these color palettes right before you press that like button for me because it does help a lot. So to start things off, we have an off-white called Cotton. And this color to me represents the clouds of Loch Lomond and maybe some sheep that you might see along the way in the hills. I think it's always important to throw in an off-white in any color palette you have because there's likely going to be things that you're going to be painting white or off-white, whether it's your baseboards, your trim, your doors, your ceilings, but also in this case, your walls. Because Cotton's LRV is only around an 83, which is still pretty light for a color. Like it is in that top 20%, but it's not insanely bright and light, just like it doesn't really get insanely light and bright in Scotland. Usually cloudy, oftentimes raining, but still beautiful regardless, just like this color. So if you are looking for an off-white, this is the color that I would recommend within this palette. The way that I put this color palette together was I just looked at photos of Loch Lomond under different contexts, different lighting, different times of the day, seasonal, all that stuff. And I just gave you some light colors, some medium colors, and then some rich dark accent colors to work with. I hope you enjoy. Next up is Mineral Deposit. And this color sort of acts as a cooler mid-tone color. It's kind of a mixture of maybe the water or also the cloudy skies. What you're getting here is a mid-tone gray. It has a little bit of an aquatic sort of cyan undertone, green and blue mixed together, but still pretty settled and undersaturated. And that's because we're gonna get way brighter with our colors later on, way more vibrant. This color is a neutral. And I think it would be best suited in practical uses in maybe bathrooms and bedrooms and things like that. That cool undertone is a little more conducive to being soothed, relaxation, kind of a spa feeling. But I also think you can use it in larger areas of your home because it is so neutral. It doesn't have any really polarizing undertones that might clash with certain things. It might clash with this purple plant over here, but anything else, I think it'll be okay. So quick recap, we got white, and gray. That's Scotland, I think. About to get a proper Scottish welcome. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the next color is Earthy Ochre. And this is a color that is just about as dark as Mineral Deposit, but definitely takes things into a much warmer direction. I love this color in this palette because it's another neutral. It's similar in depth to Mineral Deposit, but much different undertones wise. I guess the thing they share is a touch of green, but this one has more gold leaning, like ochre. In the flora of Loch Lomond, there's definitely green, but there's also some of that sort of sandy, beige, light gold coloration you can get. And this sort of combines the two for a much more vibrant, homey, cozy feel. And going from mineral deposit to this specifically, there's a big jump in color temperature, which is really, really fun. And it can create a really different vibe going from one room to the next, especially if you use this in maybe a bedroom and then the cooler color in the bathroom or even like a living dining room sort of combination might be fun to sort of separate the two spaces really, really prominently, but still be within that same sort of level of depth which is pretty cool. Now we're moving into some of the accent colors. These ones are way more saturated. And uh, when I told my Scottish friend upstairs the name of this color, she did giggle. It's called Gingery. And yes, it is a gingery, golden, reddish, terracotta, rusty color. And this color was entirely inspired by Loch Lomond in the autumn slash winter months, where you lose some of that greenery and then you get this beautiful, golden, rusty hue, especially at golden hour, like right before sunset. Gorgeous color. This is one that is extremely vibrant and potent. Not the darkest color in this palette, that will come next, but I think this is the primary accent color that maybe you wouldn't use in the hallway. <laughs> I always say that in the foyer, in those big areas, because it is so vibrant and so saturated, you might wanna use this in an accent wall form, maybe in an entire room, like a powder room, but I almost see it as a color off of the walls, 
whether it's painted furniture or little accessories that you want to incorporate, or even outside of paint altogether, and just in the form of little pops of color here and there throughout your little accessories. Maybe get a nice coffee table book with this sort of color in it to just have that little pop. You could also throw it in as a fun accent wall color, whether it's behind the TV in your family room or behind a headboard in a bedroom, that would work as well. I just really do gravitate towards this sort of orange, fiery, rusty color. Also a little bit on trend because red colors are very prominent. This one is a little more orange leaning though. So it's not going to be a coral rosy color. It is very much in that orange, rusty, slightly clay-like coloration that I really enjoy. But then finally, the color to round out this whole palette it is very on brand in terms of its name. It's called Inverness, which is a beautiful, rich, deep, dark green. And funny enough, Inverness is a place in Scotland. The one little caveat here is Inverness technically isn't near Loch Lomond. It's actually much closer to Loch Ness, hence the Ness in the name. But technicalities aside, this is the color that really completes the palette for me. It's that deep, dark, rich green that just screams the Highlands to me. I love it. And what's great about it is because it's not as fiery as gingery was, this is a color that you don't necessarily need to think as just an accent color. You can paint a full room with it and it will sort of feel nice and homey and toned down and pretty contemporary, I would say. Dark greens are still very much in. I have a strong bias towards them. The beautiful part of greens like this is they are transitional in nature. They do have that slightly cool quality. This one does lean a little more toward the warm side of green, but it will work either way, which I love. This makes me want to book a trip back to Scotland. Hi. Scotland. Scotland, not Scotland. Scotland. Hi. Here's the palette all together. Let me know what you think of this one. And I think I'm gonna do a Zen palette next in a couple of weeks, so uh, stay tuned for that. But you gotta check this one out too if you really like those nature-y green colors. Big fan of this.